Hello, welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the first of our transfer videos. I'm joined by Jared Brown. Jared is new to our team, and Jared is a St. Pat's Athletic fan. So we are getting straight into it with Pat's um, off the field business um, players that they've brought in. Jason McLean from UCD, Connor Kearns from UCD as well, goalkeeper, uh, Rory Feely from Wa Waterford, who I know is a fan's favourite in the Waterford group on Facebook. Uh, Robbie Benson from Dundalk, obviously played with um, the gaffer there, um, Stephen O'Donnell. Uh, Shane Griffin from Cork City, the left back. And then Dan Ward and Billy King. Uh, Dan Ward come from Spenny Moor Town and Billy King come from Morton. Um, Re-signed, then you got Ian Birmingham, Ben McCormack, who's a young, talented um, underage international That's right. for Ireland. Uh, Dean Clark, James Duna. Um, your outs, Kevin Toner. Glenn McCauley, Connor Clifford, David Webster, Keen Coleman, and then Mikey Dran. So, your ins and re -signed. How are you feeling about that? And I know Alan Matthews then uh, recently, he's been appointed as a coach as well. Um, quite happy with him uh, so far, I suppose. The re signs obviously the big one, I suppose, is getting Burma back for another year, 10 years at the club now. Is, uh, it's unheard of really in the League of Ireland, like, you know, because we're doing short-term contracts and clubs floating around. It's good to have him around the restaurant, especially for the the younger lads as well. Uh, some of the signs, well, I think definitely the, um, Rory Feedy's one that kind of, obviously of course Robbie Benson's probably the main one, but Rory Feedy's another one that kind of caught my eye as well. As you mentioned there about fans favourite at Waterford, he was a fans favourite as well at Pats, I think, before he left as well in 2018. Came up through the youth system as well, made his debut in 2015. Um, took him a while to kind of settle in at Waterford, you know, first season 2018, didn't maybe get as much game time as I would like, but certainly last year he really kind of caught fire at them. You mentioned fans favourite, he ended up getting the the player of the season there, so it's good to have him back as well, and he's familiar with the club and familiar with the surroundings. So I think that's obviously going to be a, um, a big help as well. Robbie Benson obviously is really the standout one, like you know, to be perfectly honest, probably as a Pats fan, you're probably still pinching yourself a small bit uh, at that accurate uh, station. But obviously with Stephen O'Donnell's connections to Sundalk, that's a big help, like you know, him from playing alongside him as well. I'm quite surprised um, Dundalk kind of let him go because he was very, very useful for them. Very experienced players, over 200 appearances in the Premier Division. I think 255 include first division with his time in that loan as well. Still only 27 years of age, definitely have a lot to offer. You know, still very young and obviously great experience in playing Europe with Dundalk in both the Europe League, Champions League, scored in that third or that playoff qualifying round even against Legia Walsall in 2016 as well. Um, the other one that kind of really uh, catches my interest as well, just from a potential point of view that we might know a lot of, is the capture of Danny Ward from, or Dan Ward, I should say, sorry, from uh, Spain Moor Town. He might be called Danny Ward by the end of the you season, never you know. never know. <laughs> might even be a past player by the end of the season, which who knows. But um, no, he's an interesting one. Only 22 years of age, but he's a former Newcastle and uh, Middlesbrough youth team player. Played a lot with their under 23s. He actually had a, a pretty decent record with Middlesbrough's under 23s. I think three goals and four assists. Um, quite surprising, considering that he was playing with Middlesbrough and Newcastle's under age team. So he dropped so far down to go down to Spain more in the Northern Premier or the Northern Na National League. You know, I thought maybe he might have got a move maybe to a League 2 team or a conference or a National Premier League. So it's quite surprising he took a drop down there. Interesting as well, I suppose, you know, he only joined Spenny Moore in the summer. So he's only there six months. So you wonder why he's kind of jumping ship again. You wonder maybe, given the fact he's only 22, he does seem as if he's got good potential. The fact he's played with Newcastle, Middlesbrough, his U teams. But maybe there's it, maybe it's just a kind of a little bit of off the field distractions there. Kind of a bit of an attitude problem that he's moving around again. Mm -hmm. Or it could be the club. Yeah, I suppose there is that. He, he said he was looking for a new challenge and everything else like that. Probably is going to be better for Sudish, to say, with St. Pats as well than with a, a national Northern League team as well in England. Like, probably would be maybe better financed out from him as well. But listen to Stephen O'Donnell's comments about him as well. He reckons he's in box to box, all action midfield players. So that's kind of good to have, especially with Conor Clifford going out the door, Keen Coleman as well. Kind of feel a bit before he there as well. Uh, I thought Clifford had a, uh, had a decent season. He scored a lot of screamers last year. Well, he certainly had yeah, the game, the goal down at the RC against Waterford last year. Yeah. I really signs up. Definitely thought when Pat's been a reasonably good start to last season under um, Harry Kenny. Harry Kenny, he was definitely one of the standout players. Mm -hmm. His performances kind of did seem to drop off a little bit towards the end. I kind of felt that a couple of games towards the end of last season where the fans maybe kind of got his back a little bit. But it was a Pat's nearly a year and a half that stage maybe just felt a new challenge uh, was needed from as well but yeah I was maybe quite surprised to see him go and Keen Coleman as well was maybe another one as well because he's quite a young player but 
he's going back home. I suppose the lower interaction of, of being back home at Cork as well. They're, they are quite a big club. Homesickness could play a factor there as well. Kevin Turner one is another interesting one as well because it's what only three four years ago he's playing Premier League football with Aston Villa. Looked a good prospect. Looked like someone that Martin Neal could be using at that time for the World Cup qualifiers in 2018. Just kind of really disappeared. I thought he looked quite decent, quite solid with um, with same path as well. Maybe fitness was a little bit of an issue, but every time I watched him, I thought he was very good. I, yeah. I always said, I always said that he looked like a player I would hate to play against, like as in a complimentary way. That yeah, he was a towards him. good size, but exactly what you want for a centre back, big, firm lad as well. Very surprised they've taken the drop down to play Leinster Senior League, but look again, you don't know these players and with their circumstances and and personalised and everything like that. But it is such a shame because he is only 23. He does, as I mentioned, four years ago, he's playing Premier League football as a teenager at Aston Villa. It is disappointing because he was someone you would be looking at now, the ideal age profile that should be knocking on the door for the Ireland team at the moment. It is disappointing. Uh, Glenn McCauley as well because we only signed him half a two last season. Obviously, former U team player of Liverpool scored a lot of goals on their 18 team. Disappointing because the, the thoughts of, or the prospects I've seen him from Taylor and Lassie, he looked lively. He looked like he was brave and he was willing to take on a man and he looked exciting I am quite surprised that after six months that he's going quite soon but I suppose look Bohemians as well still a Dublin club they've got the attraction of European football Keith Long is doing a lot of good things with young players maybe just feels that's a better opportunity for him to kind of grow and develop as a young player mm, well, you don't know what was said as well between uh, obviously Stephen O'Donnell and, and Glenn as well so, but um, another interesting one in terms of Ains is Conor Cairns from UCD obviously the, he plays with the under 21s Ireland, so he might be third choice, but he's still in there, and he obviously played in the Toulon tournament. Um, I think he he, played, he saved a couple of penalties. Um, I'm not sure the opposition was at. The I think time. it was Mexico in that the semi final, wasn't it? Yeah, the third, fourth place playoff. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. But he he, he played in it, and uh, he's obviously more known last season for that row between Bowles and UCD. But whatever, um, I think he's a great goalkeeper. Would you kind of add that to? You've got Brian uh, Brian Maher, um, and then you got Brendan Clark. So you've got three really good goalkeepers there as well uh, for this season. Like It's going to be a struggle f- uh, to hold down a, a number one spot, I think. Uh, Brendan Clark is arguably Pat's player of the season last year. In my opinion, for many games I was at, he was making sa- saves that he just shouldn't have made saves from. I think he's a fantastic goalkeeper, and even if he's not playing, I think he's great to have around the club. Yeah, I was just going to say that, as you mentioned, with the addition of Conor Kearns and Brendan Maher, of course, who played goals for Ireland to the 19 European Championships last summer. There's going to be serious competition as well for um, goalkeeping spot as well as St. Pat's. It's also good to see now they've got two goal scoring goalkeepers. Hmm. But Clark sometimes taking penalties, of course. You mentioned Conor Cairns, known for the row with the Bulls fans last season, of course. He's known as well for his overhead bicycle kick for UCD under 19 level at Cork a couple of years ago as well. But no, like in Osner, like it's, it's great to have three keepers at that high standard. Like we talked about, you know, Shamrock Rovers having the B team. Pat's going to have a good B team for goalkeepers just to keep everyone kind of happy and get regular action. Clark is a, a club legend, as you mentioned last season. Barely put a foot wrong with X in some games. Um, yeah, arguably was probably our player of the season. Conor Curran's an exciting young talent. You know, he's got a good bit of game time. He's regularly in Stephen Kenny's squad. And then you have uh, Brian Maher, as I mentioned. He, he's only a young lad and he didn't disappoint with Ireland in between the six that, out in Armenia last summer. So he'll be looking to push on. It is going to I, be, I believe he turned down uh, offers from abroad because he wanted to finish the leaving cert. I think he's finished the leaving cert now. So, so well. yeah, so it kind of goes to show he's got a good head in his shoulder as well and he's quite a sensible lad. And, and maybe he also feels there is pop, pos, possibilities and opportunities at St. Pat. It is going to be interesting, but it's one of them positions, whatever about kind of chopping and changing, you know, partnerships at centre back or midfield or any of that outfield player, you need a steady number one and just kind of have that consistency and just kind of give off a confidence level and everything else that we've seen it with Shamrock Rovers two seasons ago there was um, chopping and changing the goalkeeper between um, Ho- yeah and and Horgan as well like and it didn't really help I can't pronounce his name yeah Polish yeah, yeah and uh, Horgan as well from the young lad from Galway it didn't really kind of help their situation yeah up until they got Manus and Bazuma yeah. yeah so like you're kind of thinking whoever does get the nod to start the water for game on the 14th of February you know, if they kind of make a good impression and keep a clean sheet that night, you'd like to see them kind of get a consistent run unless there's kind of injuries. But, you know, I'm pretty sure Conor Cairns didn't sign just to kind of sit on the bench like and Mar me or Clark kicking on a small bit in terms of age. Like, But I would probably expect, considering that Conor Clark is Stephen O'Donnell's pair, I think he would probably be... Conor Cairns. Or Conor Cairns, sorry, yeah. is Stephen O'Donnell's pair. He signed him. He will probably be in, in mind to start that first game against Waterford, but the pre-season games will probably tell a lot too. Yeah, Um 
Just kind of a, a funny one as well. I know Mikey Drennan started off the season really well last season, dropped off um, a bit. Um, are you surprised to see him go? It was apparently mutually agreed that he went. Was that a, are you sad about that? Are you disappointed? Like? Disappointed because in general, I, I like Mikey as, as a lad. He comes across as kind of a, a good kind of lad and everything else like that. And of course, he's had his troubles off the pitches, well documented for time with Aston Villa and Shamrock Rovers. As you mentioned last season, you know, a bit like Pats in general, he started the season really well. He got the winner from the penalty spot, the opening game against Cork, went down, got a winner in the last minute away to Saibo in the second game. But then, kind of, as soon as Pats kind of form went, he kind of just dropped off a little bit. I always kind of felt watched him last season as well, probably because he only had six months the previous end of the season with, with Shamrock or with Saibo Rovers. He was maybe just lacking a little bit of fitness and you never kind of seemed to catch up on him. He kind of drifts away from a good few match day squads as well last season. Disappointing because I would have liked to see him again, possibly be given another opportunity as well. You know, the likes of course Reese McCabe and Chris Forrester as well. Like you kind of you can see, him, especially with Forrester towards the end of last season, that he was kind of starting to kick on. It would have been like as you mentioned, his mutual agreement. You just kind of wonder. We know, of course, about some of his uh, personal problems. Was that kind of maybe a factor and issue as well uh, at play as well? Kind of like and as I mentioned, maybe just with the fitness levels, I had to felt maybe he just wasn't quite able to get up to standard. It's disappointing because. I mentioned he still only is 25, 26. Like if he can kind of get everything sorted, like he could still definitely offer a lot to a League of Ireland team. Yeah, I, I think someone, someone maybe like a Waterford or something might be a good option for him now. Yeah, especially being if. Being, oh, they signed Michael O'Connor. But yeah, still. but he's he, just even like the fact he's a Kenny lad. Waterford's very, very close to home. If, even if that was an issue, well, like he didn't like being in Dublin. Kind of maybe compared to Kenny, like someone like Waterford yeah. would be ideal for him. Or even dropping down to the first division. You know, if he just kind of wanted to kind of ease himself back into it because it probably was now in fairness. That second half season, 2018, when he was with Sligo, he scored a lot of goals that helped keep them up. Like so, he he's shown when he's at it, he's definitely at standard for a Premier Division team. Yeah. Um. Then just lastly, because I was looking at kind of resigns there, Dean Clark, James Dooney. James Dooney kind of came in with a bit of a reputation that he was going to kick on. It hasn't really kicked on and lived up to I suppose expectation. What are your thoughts on him and kind of this season? Can he maybe make that step up? I think with, with Dean Clark, you know what you're going to get with Dean. Yeah. Is he'll work tirelessly for you. Um, I, I think he didn't get a lot of game time, but I, start, I think he started getting a lot more game time when Stephen O'Donnell came in more so. Um, he's kind of used as a wing back, but I think that's just down to his pure fitness. Fitness and, and never he, he looks after himself, do you know yeah, what I mean? He has a, he's a fitness instructor. The only problem with Dean kind of maybe would just be injuries as well, but kind of seemed to creep up in the last season. Yeah. He didn't come into the season fit, he was carrying a knock, I think it was the fifth, sixth game of the season. At home to Shamrock Rovers. But you always know he's. he's yeah, you know, you know what you're going, going to get from. Like obviously, just going back to what you're on about James doing. I think this is a make or break season. With his third season, you mentioned he hasn't really kicked on. The stats would back that up. Five goals in 33 games would suggest that as well. You know, I don't kind of want to kind of be critical of players and things like that. I'm in no position to do that. But I just kind of felt in some games, particularly towards the end of last season, I remember he came on against Tala or at Tala against Shamrock Rovers, and he just didn't kind of seem like he wants it. He kind of wants to be there or kind of involved and everything else. Like. Like that, but you know, I just kind of hoping because in the end, they, you want every player to do well, you respect the club, so hopefully, you can kind of like kick on this season and um, do quite well. Especially, there's going to be more positions up for grab now, obviously, with the news that uh, Brandon Miller won't be around this season, like or for next season. So, there is a golden opportunity, you could see more game time from there. Obviously, of course, uh, Jay uh, Cleveland as well, in from UCD, he's experienced playing nearly every game last season for UCD. In terms of McLennan. Or McLennan, sorry, he's played I think 35 games used to last season so he played every game bar one so like he's going to be obviously biting at the nail as well and even looking at re-signs you know Ben McCormack I know he's only 16, 17 but he is really he's a good, really good yeah, like he's underage. played 15, 16, 17 for Ireland he's been part of various successful underage teams with Pats as well I don't expect him to play a lot of games this season but I do expect him to make match day squads I think he'd be similar to Brandon Kavanagh and Rovers maybe yeah. in terms he's, of he's in you know, the EA Sports Cup Leinster Cup Senior Cup, they could be the ideal opportunities and throw them on for a couple of cameo appearances in the league. But you now, going back to your point on James, this is definitely now third season, make or break. He really needs to, well, five goals and 33 appearances. Like, you know, he really ideally you'd be looking for him to hit, you know, twice that figure this season, really, if he really wants to kick on. Like, because mm. he's still only a young lad as well. Yeah. But um, just in terms then, just lastly, if you're thinking, look, I'm not expecting you to get this right, but. Uh, how do you think Pats will do the season? What position do you think they'll finish up? It's hard because the last two seasons, especially the last season, new manager come in for well, similar to this season with the signings with Mickey Drennan, Reese McCabe, um, and Ga- McCabe Gary, Gary Shaw, Chris, Chris, well. yeah, 
Chris Farr took last season, there was a real expectation going into it with all them exciting attacking forward players that Pats were going to finish Europe, challenge for a title. Never really happened. They struggled to score goals last season. I, I can rarely think of a game where Pats scored two or more goals in the match. This season, I kind of feel that the expectations levels are a little bit kind of lower. There isn't maybe much excitement. Maybe the exception of Robbie Benson, there isn't much kind of high profile signs compared to last year as well. Stephen McDonald, young lad, there were signs last season, definitely a couple of games. Rovers way last season, I thought first half was very, very good. The Derry win towards the end of the season, I know we didn't manage to pit them for European football. That 3 1 victory was very, very good to show what we can kind of uh, quite do. It's going to take time. You know, Stephen is still learning his trade as a manager and everything else like that. But a club like Pats, you know, we need to be in Europe. It's as, as simple as that. We only got into Europe by default last season because of the situation with Waterford. 2015, that's five seasons ago now. That's the last time we outright qualified for Europe. It's a long, long time for a club of Pats' uh, recent history as well. So I'd like to think that we could definitely be challenging for European players. Like, like at the end of the day, last season, by many standards, was deemed a failure for Pats. We still went into the last day of the season with a chance of European football. So... If we can kick on from that, like there's no reason, hopefully, why we can't get into Europe. And maybe the, the teams that are in Europe this season, like the Derry and Bowles, maybe that might take it out from a small bit and we could kind of capitalise on that. So I'd be hopeful, European finish and a good cup run. Okay, so maybe fourth, third, fourth place. Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, well, I think that's it in terms of excited about the season ahead anyway. Yeah, you seem, you seem oh, yeah, optimistic. Yeah, definitely. It's nice to have the normal routine on a Friday night back. Only, what, five weeks ago now, so yeah. you, can't, you, can't, you can't be really like for Friday night. Yeah. Well, uh, let us know your thoughts, especially Pats fans. Uh, are you happy with the business that Pats have done? They're probably going to add some more players between now and then anyway. So, um, But we're just trying to get a feel for how fans are feeling towards the start um, of the new season. But uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much for watching and we'll, we'll speak to you soon.